presentation and yeah let's kick off so i know this is an open source meeting but i've actually been outsourced through this presentation i'm obviously not uh, david crossman the original speaker he intended to be here and gives his apologies and would have loved to have caught up with many of you currently he's flying to australia where he hopes to receive an asia pacific spatial excellence award on behalf of IIC for a training course which we're currently running which i'll talk about later on in the presentation so the perspective of this presentation will be from an open source user customer point of view of using open source technology and software to develop solutions such as the new eims which is the focus of this presentation and also i'll be presenting from a business point of view i'm not a technical expert by any means and our development team is based in canada and india so i'll do my best to cover off the technical elements so we are active supporters and users of open source technology many of our solutions uh, that we develop benefit greatly from the work of the open source community so yeah in this presentation we'll cover the scope and purpose of the development the new way situation the requirements our software resolve the outcome and as all good presentations have we'll do a bit of a shameless plug for some for some training and we'll have some time for questions at the end so i see work in the pacific community provided lidar data training to 95 students from 10 countries including Niue. on completion of the training the Niue government approached us with a concern despite having fantastic lidar data provided by SBC, they had no ability to utilize the data due to a lack of infrastructure. So we discussed the situation with Niue and found that they had no da uh, national data store and disparate data holdings. So that includes the types and formats and storage mediums, and also uh, no national infrastructure, hardware, software, training, and minimal data held in Niue. So a lot of their data is held offshore or overseas, so it's very easy for them to lose their data or, and very difficult for them to keep a track of. And as a result, they're not quite sure of what their total data holdings is. And they have an inability to access or manage their data and also minimal data sharing. So they don't really have mechanisms to share their data very effectively. And there's a lot of protectionism between their departments where people uh, hold their data to try to use it for leverage. And then there's a large amount of data that are held in hard copy format. And as a result of all of this, they had a limited ability to, or they have a limited ability to benefit from the data that they hold. So having discussed the situation with the Niue government, we created a proposal for a resolve that they now call the EIMS, or Environmental Information Management System, which will provide the necessary functionality to load, manage, and visualize a portfolio of geospatial data along with a set of features to make an effective use of such data resources in practice. And the solution will also be enhanced by a mobile application that will provide direct access to the geo portal and will also support the ability to use QR codes to easily connect end users with individual resources. So we decided to integrate the support of QR codes to support the tourism industry in Niue. So you'll see there on the slide that there were 24 stakeholder meetings held. Uh, usually there are only about six stakeholder engagements, but the Niue government was very keen. So we went through 24 meetings with multiple parties involved throughout. These included the uh, Niue government departments, as well as the community and village leaders, environmental entities, commercial entities, and NGOs. And in the meetings, we explained the concept then we discuss with them the user cases and scenarios and based on the results of these meetings we created a prioritized list of user requirements which you'll see shown on the table on the left with the blue header at the top you can see all the requirements you'd expect including um, a, of a spatial data infrastructure such as a central data repository data discovery visualization and so on and however Lower down on the table are some of the more unusual requirements, 
such as a village portal, community messaging, and education support. So we co when we collated the user requirements, we found that what the Nui government wanted was really a silver bullet solution. So not just an SDI, but what we call an SDI++. plus plus plus. So literally a solution to do it all. To have, hold, build, manage, serve, analyze, share, visualize, and report spatial and non-spatial enabled data. From images to video, sound, art, history, culture, and medical information. And also be the recognized Nui data repository and allow for utilization by the Nui government, community, NGOs, diaspora, and general public. And also win buy-in from the community with village-specific sites, community announcements, and links to other government services. So here's an outline of the solution. A web application to manage and visualize the spatial data, a mobile application in which the spatial services could be consumed, and OGC compliant services, so meeting the open geospatial consortium standards, including web mapping standards and web coverage services, as well as levering the existing technology, including ISC's Nautilus cloud infrastructure. So that's a cloud-based spatial resolve to serve clients such as NOAA to develop and serve up their client services. And we gave them an option of a cloud-based versus nationally own infrastructure. Um, yeah, we gave Nui an option of building a cloud-based or physical infrastructure in Nui, and they decided to go with the cloud-based option resolve as they had strong connectivity, providing them with the advantage of scalability as well as direct and ongoing support from IIC and the removal of any need for, to maintain any physical hardware and infrastructure locally. And as mentioned, we also included QR code integration. And we also have visualization systems at key NOAA facilities, which includes a console to navigate the system and also a live screen setup. And training for users um, to allow for sufficient support for the users as well as those who will be managing the ERMS system. So here's what we used for the NUA EIMS project. We used the portfolio, or the stack that we used there, and we used the portfolio of high quality open source technology and software components to build the solution, spanning the back end as well as the front end development, including Enterprise Postgres database, GeoServer, Tomcat web server, packaged and containers using Docker technology. So on the back end, we predominantly developed using Java and JavaScript technology, use Spring Boot framework combined with open API specification, and we use Swagger to document our API endpoints. And on the front end, our main components used for geospatial data visualization is open layers, although more recently we've used Terra.js, and that was a component used for this specific development. And we also use HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript, jQuery, and Bootstrap. So utilizing open source resources has really helped us to bring robust and cost-effective solutions to our clients, especially for developing countries such as Nui, where there's a huge benefit to lowering costs while still offering equal or better capabilities than commercial off-the-shelf products. Thank you to all of you working on open source technology and software that allows all of this to be possible. So we have a specialist software house based in Canada and India with 150 staff across the two countries. And we have deep expertise in geospatial solutions. So we're happy to connect with experienced developers in geospatial solutions and also to work with software companies looking to build their capabilities in the geospatial field and to help those building geoportal solutions. So I'll leave my contact details at the end if any of you guys would like to reach out concerning any of those things. So as a result, the NUA EIMS is up and running and will be released to NUA and the world soon. So this is what you'll see once you're logged into the web service. The left-hand side is the top of the homepage, and on this you'll see the drop-down menus on the top right-hand side there. And a series of portals that will take the user to pre-positioned data sets and information. And as you scroll down, you'll see the information on the right-hand side 
on the screen, such as various information about UA tourism, geography, and infrastructure. So what we have provided is a easy to use portal with or smart device capable and managed user access as well. So we can assign access to different levels of data depending on the level of access that a user should have, such as authorizing uh, access to sensitive medical records and access to the full MIUE data holdings, as well as direct or grouped data access and links to other relevant data holdings as well. And the ability to search and view available spatial data, both terrestrial and bathymetric, and to upload and download data sets, and also data capture for organizations, citizen science, including biology, fishing, and the others listed there, as well as for students. So that new AMS system has full GIS functionality, visualization, the ability to select, view, and overlay data sets to manipulate and interrogate data, as well as tailored reporting and tailored analysis. So in summary, we've achieved all of the contracted and intended outcomes and have provided NUE with a structural data infrastructure integrated with a knowledge base containing all the functionality and features you can see here which we've touched on in the other slides. However, of note to you all is the last bullet point that it promotes open data, data sharing, and has maximized the use of open standards and freeware to minimize the cost to the client. So there are some really important side benefits that have come from this development. As a result of this process, ISC have been able to engage with off-island organizations and entities on behalf of the Nui government and have collected and collated Nui data into the EIMS, resulting in the increase of Nui's data holdings by 400%. We've achieved very strong community buy-in with some awesome things happening, such as a school naming competition to decide the name of the system, with the winning name being the Environmental Information Management System, EIMS, and also the Nui trans language translation of the system. The Education Department in Nui intends to use the EIMS for the development of their curriculum for all age groups. A good example of this is they've suggested um, they're wanting to get students to do environmental management plans for themselves or their community and to store them within the EIMS system to be reviewed two or three years later down the track to see if the students have followed through with their plans. So there's a really strong desire to use the, this for environmental management and awareness, including data capture through citizen science. And down the bottom there, you'll see a really important note. UNESCO has listed the Nguyen language as definitely at risk. However, because the EOMS has an embedded knowledge base that will hold information on Nguyen culture, history, language, and traditional environmental practices, this system will help preserve the Nguyen culture and language for future generations, which we believe is an incredible byproduct of this spatial data infrastructure development. So that concludes the main presentation about the EMS, and I'll jump into a bit of a training plug in the next slide, and then we'll have some time for a few questions. So we're currently running two uh, really incredible training courses annually, which are the only one of its kind in this region. To get people industry ready by the completion of the course in six months in both hydrography and cartography. And they have a real practical focus and are recognized by the IHO and IBSC. So the next intake is in September, 2023. If any of you guys are interested in this training or know anyone who is, feel free to get in touch at my email there in the nice black bold writing there. And yeah, we can jump into some questions. If you guys have any more technical questions, I'll relay them to my uh, specialist team members. But otherwise, yeah, I can do my best answering questions whatever I have. If you guys have any questions. This is like a Teams meeting with no one else.
Uh, the timeline has been about a year period. Um, so we are in the process actually at the moment of shipping uh, the consoles and screens to Nui and then setting up the system over there. So the system is running and we're just adding additional um, data and completing everything um, so it can be packaged nicely. So a cloud environment. So we've got a Nautilus cloud infrastructure that I mentioned there, and then it's all um, cloud-based. So it's easy for them in new way because they've got quite good connectivity to connect and use the system. Um, in new way. Um, are you going to be managing the entire system there, or are you going to pass on the system to the cloud? To be honest, I don't know the exact answer to that, but. Currently, we are still managing it, and we will be giving them ongoing support, as I've mentioned. But we will be training there. Um, we'll be running some training and going over there to equip the people there to be able to manage the system themselves in terms of uploading different things and using the data and being able to um, yeah, use the system to how they want and how we've built it to be. Is it more? Um, like for the GUI base, like you can see the same thing if you, if you use the system? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the system, as you saw the short snippet there, is quite easy to navigate and it's set up in a way where the front end of it is very easy to yeah, work and operate things. Okay, we'll leave that there. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thanks for listening.